Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, CTO at DVS, and thank you for everybody who likes, shares, comments, and subscribes to our YouTube channel and follows us on our social media platforms. For those of you that don't, please head over to YouTube, hit the subscribe button, and thank you very much for doing so. If you don't follow us on Facebook, please do go and uh, follow us on our forum. We do regularly give away content on there, um, so you could be in with a chance of winning a prize. And one of these prizes this week will be a six megapixel camera, so details to follow in our forum. Also, if you've got a smartphone like a normal human would, Android or iOS, go and download the DVS app where you'll be notified of any events, any competitions, any prizes, plus you interact with your account manager, quotes, etc., all through the app, and it's always been made better. So, moving on, six megapixel. So, the gap in the market between four and between four and eight is a definite one. You know, people do regularly ask us, and we did used to have an old six megapixel platform about eighteen months ago, and we've gone back to it now with the AccuSense. Um, product range so these are now in stock at DVS so we have currently three different variations um, you know we will offer as many six megapixel offerings as we can when they're available um, and we'll even look at introducing a black model but for today the purpose of today's video we have a very focal so we've got the very focal bullet camera um, 266 version G2 AccuSense powered by Darkfighter with infrared so I'll show you that in a minute. We've got the Powered by Dark Fighter AccuSense fixed lens turret camera. And we've got the um, fixed lens bullet camera. What we do also have, for those of you that are interested, and I've got it out so I'll just quickly show you, we have a color view camera, four megapixel, um, with the live guard function. Now live guard is now the new name for active deterrent, so flashing light and audible warning. So we've got a four megapixel turret, four megapixel bullet camera with in color view with the active deterrent live guard functionality. Just as a side note. So we'll first start with the turret camera, the most popular housing to date. We have the turret camera, six megapixel, powered by Dark Fighter, so it still has that infrared technology, but it works down to that ultra low light. You have the uh, infrared plus the flashing light, live guard function, active deterrent. So you have the flashing light, or static, depends on how you program it. Built-in speaker, um, that can do the one of the predefined audio messages. So line crossing or motion detection, or sm smart motion detection, somebody walks in the field of view, flashing light or static, plus that audible warning should be enough to deter any unwanted activity. If it isn't, using the Height Connect app, you're able to talk live to that audio output of that camera, which then has a bigger impact again. PoE powered, this one has, it's got the active SL, so the sound and light, the alarm input output, audio input output, PoE plus 12 volt DC power, depending on how you wanna do that. Um, simple design, so that collar removes, there's a locking screw in there. Un unloosen that locking screw and it gives you the full tilt and turn capability. Now, for those of you that still struggle to fit this to the back box, the junction box, unloosen that or loosen that retaining screw there. This will separate. This will come off the housing and you'll see on the back, back there's four screw holes there. They are the screw holes that mount to the back of the junction box. Use the screws provided with the junction box, locate it on fit this back and tighten that locking screw when it's in situ. And that is how you fit it to the back box, not through the free holes on the outside ring there. Once you've done it, locate that cowling and you'll be looking pretty. So full tilt just capability, fixed lens, six megapixel, powered by Dark Fighter with AccuSense. It's G2 camera model, um, really, really powerful um, on our most popular camera. And for those of you that keep asking, one that is aesthetically pleasing, it does look more modern, but it also has a property with infrared especially. Um, it does help with the infrared before anybody asks. So yeah, that's that one. So the fixed lens or the very focal bullet camera, I'm making a mess already. So the very focal bullet camera, 
So again, this has got that integrated bracket, one screw, and it lets you tilt, turn, adjust fully once it's in situ, tighten that up and it locks it in position. Integrated bracket design, so you've got your PoE, if I tilt it that way, you've got your PoE 12 volts, alarm input output, audio input output on the back there. Very familiar design, which most of you are used to. Adjustable sun shield on the top. Um, active deterrent, so you've got your micro SD card slot, and the turret has also got one. Micro SD card slot there, your built in speaker. Now, I often get asked between a turret camera and a bullet camera, the speaker on the bullet camera is louder. So, depending on the effect you're looking for, sometimes it is easier to opt for the bullet camera because it does have a louder output. But you've got the built in speaker there. Flashing light is the deterrent, so you've got that white flashing light or static. Powered by dark fire, so the infrared LEDs will be around the side. But it's 2.8 to 12 mil, very focal. G2 platform, 6 megapixel, 2.8 to 12 mil, very focal, powered by PoE. Integrate your back box. You can, let me just put this by here. Inside. Inside the housing, you get the rubber, sort of spare rubber. You get the integrated Allen key. And what a lot of people don't realize this thing is for. So this little tool that comes in there, quite handy. What you do is, you've got your cable with your Cat5 end made up already. You can simply put your cat, that onto the Cat5 cable. And you can push that through that rubber housing really nicely without making a too big of a hole. So that'll pierce through there and it'll seal behind the cable. So it's a nice handy tip for you. And that's what that white cap is. It allows you to put it over the Cat5 and then push it through that rubber seal without making a big hole a detriment to the camera. So integrated bracket, locate that to the wall with the metal plate in there. Camera goes on there, secures in there, job done. So that's the very focal model. So again, another one we have in stock is this fixed lens model. So again, powered by Darkfire, AccuSense technology, adjustable rain shield, different bracket design to so it's a smaller integrated bracket. It's got three screws on there, one, two, and then three. So you've got the full uh, tilt turn uh, capabilities. Fly lead on the back, so it's got the alarm input output, audio input output, PoE, or power it with 12 volts, depending on the application. Built-in speaker, so again, nice little built-in speaker. Micro SD card slot, fixed lens and you've got power by dark fire so infrared plus the white light as that active deterrent so again active deterrent live guard really really powerful and all of the cameras with the sl in the park code have the active deterrent functionality and we also have them in the color view and please stay tuned because we've got eight megapixel color view uh, turret cameras on their way and again with the active defense live guard function it really does help deter unwanted activity it, it really is I'm sure soon enough it'll only be available. This will just be a standard format on all cameras, and it'll just be if you use it, use it. If you don't, you don't. You know that's that's my theory in the not too distant future. So smaller um, base for the camera, but if you look at it in comparison to the very focal model, you can see the housings are identical, same shape, same look, same size. So aesthetically, they look the same. And to be honest, the only way you'd be able to tell by looking at it is by that integrated bracket. It's got a bigger footprint and you know that's very focal compared to this smaller fixed lens model here. So that's the overview of the 6 megapixel range. I say a lot of you have requested this. Some of you may already be using it. It has improved since the original 6 megapixel that we offered 18 months ago in the FWD range. Again, all of these uh, 6 megapixel come with that really powerful AccuSense technology, so help reduce input false alarms by human and vehicle uh, detection. Fixed lens, very focal, turret camera, and then more will be added. Like I said, we'll look at the possibility of adding black ones and more housings as they come online. But fixed lens, buller, very focal buller, plus the turret camera there, they're really the go-to product. So as long as we got them covered, I think we'll be okay. Other than that, I'm going to go and put one of these up outside now so you can see the difference or see how clear the 6 megapixel image is. Um, so it won't take too long. I'll just go and check it out now. So stay tuned and we'll be back in a minute. Thank you. Okay, so we have fitted the camera externally now, um, replaced the 4 megapixel camera. Really pleased with the results. 
This is the full model number, so you can see it's a six megapixel fixed lens bullet camera, audio input output with alarms, the ISU, plus the SL sound and light, which is the active deterrent now called LiveGuard. Currently, this is the latest firmware. And the VCA resource default is smart event, so that enables the line cross and intrusion capability. So most people would actually adopt that using the AccuSense technology will allow you to reduce that false alarm. You can change it to face capture mode and then the face capture VCA will come up, um, added to the bottom of this menu. The camera will reboot and the face capture mode, you do lose the capability of the smart event. Or you can change it to monitoring and save that. Again, you lose the VCA, but it does allow you to use rotate mode. We're going to leave it as smart event. Maintenance normal height vision menus, upgrade, reboot, default, etc. Auto device maintenance. So I can actually enable this to restart at a certain time and date. Um, you know, should you want the camera to reboot for some reason, you can now set that. Security, you know, set the appropriate to your application. User management, again, set as needed. Network, so I set my default network addresses. I'll just put this in here. Good old Google DNS. Um, and then just set the appropriate stuff. Advanced settings. Again, we've got ISUP and Hike Connect. So ISUP is the back end connection for Hike Central. And then Hike Connect is your Hike Connect app. It's already online. Integration protocols, alarm servers, network service, etc. Enable what you need depending on your application. Video and audio. So I've enabled video and audio on mainstream and on the substream to make use of that built in audio. Um, 6 megapixel selected, but you can drop it down to 1080p, 720 or 4 megapixel. But obviously, 6 megapixel is the required on this test, and that's what we'll leave it as. I've enabled H.265 at 20 frames a second. That's more than adequate for the application I'm using. But again, audio. So the microphone in, you can adjust that up to the full. You can choose line in if you're not using the built-in microphone. Region of interest and display info on stream. I just ticked the enable dual VCA. So pretty standard stuff. Image, you got full capability under the display. So adjusting the scenes, brightness, exposure, day night switch. And we're gonna leave that as day mode, um, but adjust it as needed. Backlight settings, white balance, image enhancement and video adjustment. And you've got preset, pre preset ones there. OSD, change the name and text like I've done there. Pretty standard stuff. Image parameter switch, you can set, you can enable that and switch between different um, between different times of the day and even months. You can select different profiles depending on that application. So again, you know, during the summer months, it could be you need you know strong front light enabled because of so the WDR function, but in the winter you don't. So you can you know adjust that as needed. Really powerful. Event motion detection. Again, this is motion version 2.0, so it's the enhanced motion. Um, you can now enable human and vehicle detection based on motion as well. And then under linkage action, you've got flashing alarm and audible warning as that option. But again, alarm input, you can do the same. So connect the PIR and again, trigger the flashing alarm and audible warning. Flashing light alarm output, flashing duration 15 seconds, but you can adjust it as needed. High, medium or low frequency or static and then the time period that that relates to. Audible warning. Again, prompt is just an, a, a little sound. Warning, you've got these pre-selected ones here, preset ones, so I selected this one. How many times that plays on VCA activation, and then the volume, and when that is active, the schedule is active. So set those as required. Using the Hike Connect app, if you add this camera to the Hike Connect app, it will allow two-way audio through the app as well, um, and through an iSeries, it does also work Smart event. So intrusion detection. So I'm going to simply enable it. You've got up to four boxes on intrusion, four lines, because it's the new AccuSense. So we're going to draw an area. M maximum size object is that. Minimum size, we're going to say is that. Because we do get some birds and rabbits walking around. We're going to do human and vehicles and click save. Threshold. You can adjust zero to 10. So an object has to be in there 10 or more seconds before it's triggered. But let's say, let's say three seconds. Yes. 
sensitivity 50%, which is where I leave it for the default value. And then we've got basic higher, higher or highest for target validity and click save. We'll start a basic, but you can adjust that should you feel you need to. Arming schedule, so the arming schedule is 24 seven currently. And then linkage method, when this is triggered, it will notify the app. You can do an email, upload the FTP or memory card, but we're also gonna do upload or trigger the flashing light and audible warning on VCA trigger, which is where the deterrent function comes in. And again, you can do the same with motion. You can do the same with line crossing. So anyone stands in there for three or more seconds with this a human or a vehicle, it will trigger the detection and then the flashing light and audible warning will trigger based on my settings. Line crossing, you can do exactly the same. It's got still got the filter, still got the human and vehicle detection. Um, no time based on that, but again, still up to four lines and linkage method there. Storage, I've got an SD card fitted. I do tend to fit a lot of SD cards in my cameras now. Simply initialize it format it, click format, and you can actually encrypt the SD card. So you can actually click encrypt, put an encryption password in there and it will be encrypted. And it really is as simple as this. I'll show you how clear this video is or how clear the, the image is now. Just wait for this to format. So apologies, I should have done this before. You do have to wait. <laughs> Here we go. And what we will do is put the recording for 24 seven on this SD card. So if anything does happen with the NVR, say it develops a fault, which it won't, but if it does, we still got some edge recording. So schedule settings, enable, continue record. Yes, 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 yes. So that's done to the live view. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the six megapixel. So you can see 2.8 mil, so it's fixed lens. You can see the VCA box in there, and you can see it's already detecting targets. Um, effectively, much, much better than it was at four megapixels. So I used to have a four megapixel, and I can already see the difference that makes. You know, it does have digital zoom. Again, 2.8 mil is very wide, but we do have the capability of digital zoom and you can actually draw a box around there and it will zoom in as required. Probably a little bit too far to make out number plates at that distance and that small, but you get the idea. But digital zoom, you can keep zooming in and it'll just keep going. turn it off and it goes back so you can see that number plate on that vehicle is probably around 30 meters away so very small number plate but you can see how clear this image is he's not going to go in the box but yeah that's it that's the accusense camera six megapixel really good image if you've got any questions please leave them in the comments in stock now get in touch with your sales rep see you next week for another how-to video take care stay safe <laughs>